Hey guys, welcome to the part of the shop you never get to see unless you've been in my shop, huh, Gally Volt? Anyway, this back here is where all the cool stuff is. Got all them old Gibson neck parts and forms and who knows what and the license plate frames and all the metal shards I use and license plates hid there, maybe even an old guitar or two and yeah the chick flick teal stash oh yeah look you guys think i don't do brick house boxes or have some anyway all that paint i use i haven't given up cigar box guitars i just quit after making 250 videos i don't think you need any more anyway i'm gonna jump on the other side of the camera here because we're going to talk about something else i don't talk about a router if you want to tear yourself up, this is the machine to do it on now. You see there's a router up there, and you see there's one down there. Man, this pointer is handy. It knows it, too. Anyway, this one is coming off. This one is coming on because if you want to hurt yourself, this is how to do it. So I'm going to tell you what I'm doing here to change out a router on this router table, another must-have. And then we're going to talk about how... Well, you'll see when I get there. Let me get behind the camera. I know you've been waiting on that, right? Okay, guys. This is starting to look like a cooking show, but there's no food. Um, you got a lot of ingredients here. First off, I use routers mainly to cut drop-downs in necks so I can put a license plate on here and a pickup. Um, if you don't have one and you're building necks, it's pretty rough um, but I would say a router and a belt sander are, are, and a chop saw and 14 other tools are must-haves if you're going to build your own necks and, and uh, cut drop downs in that mainly it's string height you're, you're really after string height so I use a router a lot now routers are dangerous if you get a piece of this bit flying off of here, you're going to be missing an eye. Uh, who knows what? If you're adjusting these things, you don't want the power on on a router unless you're using it. Okay? So I've told you before, I use these sewing machine paddles. So I have the power for the router running through this and then to the router because. Unless I have my foot on this, I can either set this to off and on or use it to like a sewing machine paddle. However fast I go, whatever, I can set these. These are pretty cheap. I call them sewing machine paddles. They have a hold amount. Can you see that right there? Yeah, that's so it's not slipping all over the place and somebody else is stepping out or your dog or whatever. And you're cutting your fingers off so if you are going to use a router make sure that it is stable and the power is off unless you're using it especially if you're making adjustments in this case I am changing out the router from this fine table next thing you notice I have this on a cart that moves around I can push this off into the corner when I'm not using it uh, space is a premium in my shop, especially the way I hoard things. So, wheels, clamp, put this on. The police, when they're ticketing your car, aren't the first ones, and they don't have exclusive rights to use these. couple clamps on the wheels, everything is in place. So, let me kill the camera for a minute, and let's talk a little bit about putting a router onto a router table. Okay, old router new router now this router table has four bolts here and those uh, are bolt holes and they are countersunk meaning that the nut that goes in here needs to sit below the surface here if anything is sticking up here and you're running something over the router table see I keep my fingers away even when there's nothing here so that's how wary I am but anyway the bolt has to sit flush below here so you don't want rounded off bolts because they'll stick up a little bit and then you wonder why you get these little humps now a little hump in 
your the surface of your neck where the pickup and everything sits is going to create uh, the equivalent of well your neck might as well be cockeyed one way or the other so you want to make sure that everything is nice and level and that all starts with not having any humps and bumps on here anyway this plate here comes off and it sits down below up through it comes the router this part comes up through here and that plate lines up underneath so the router sits upside down like so let's see if yeah I think you can see that up underneath here so we're gonna put this down in here and get a bolt going oh before I, I do this if you're gonna get rid of a router because it's skipping it's not working uh, something's hung up don't give it to somebody and then you're like seeing them a year later and their fingers look like this yeah that's on you then throw it away dismantle it throw it away it's like a TV that doesn't work set out on the curb it says free wonderful do not sell broken stuff at yard sales please oh 17 more things before I put this on again this is going to sit upside down so you want to take a look at how you want this turned do you want your adjustments where they're easy to get to do you want your on and off switch where it's easy to get to uh, the switch for the machine is right here you see that and so if I set everything up I'll actually be working this side so I want to make sure that this is situated this way when I put it underneath the table one more thing always one more thing one of these is different from the other this one looks countersunk this one has a shoulder if I put this one in here it fits right down in there except look see that jumps up that's going to give you a jump up in your routing work that you don't want where this one jumps sits right down in there and there's no jump up pay attention to that next thing y'all know what Loctite is right put a little bit on there like so you do not want your router starting to wobble loose and the uh, worst thing that can happen is it comes undone stuff starts flying you start looking like a chain hand in the oil field or a little bit of wobbling and again this ends up being anything but smooth and you don't want that so a little bit of Loctite finally let's put this thing on okay so I got my first one in I didn't tighten it up all the way now I'm going to take my friend the awl and push it down two of these holes here so I can take another one that I have Loctite in on and then I will run that down through there and do the same now notice that I'm not using a rubber tipped screwdriver and you're saying there's no such thing as a rubber tip Phillips screwdriver well you know what there should be because here's the dilemma you see I go through great effort to paint these chick flick teal and then the minute you put the appropriate size screwdriver in there you get this chip out right there do you see that that's not perfect that's the kind of thing you need therapy for so this is not about aesthetics so I guess I'll have to settle but if you know about a rubber tip screwdriver somebody's trying to invent one I have to meet them anyway we'll put the rest of these in again we're not going to tighten them up until they're all in like so and then we'll go around make sure everything is tight now pull up on the bottom to make sh sure that the weight of this thing isn't going to take up a, a couple of 
threads. There we go. And always remember, lefty loosey, righty tidy, and then cross tighten them like you do a tire that you don't want to fall off. There we go. All right, I have put a bit on the router. Um, some of these have uh, a large capacity for a bit. Some of them have a colette that's in there for smaller bits. So this is the bit that I use uh, to do my necks. Uh, this router has a wheel lock right next to here where you just put your finger in right down in here. Again, power off. It's got a wrench. Always keep this wrench near the router. Imagine that so you're not digging for it. Next thing we're going to do now is the power for the sewing machine pedal is undone, but we're going to plug the router in the other right way. There we go. So this is set up. I put this on the floor. And then this is the dumb end where stuff fi is fixing to happen if you don't have your power switch off on the router and on the router table. Okay, before we get rolling here, I want to show you why I'm such a freak about these things. But these bolts here used to look like this. Look, they've been stripped out. I bought this router table at a yard sale, the permanent yard sale in Lander's. California, cultural capital world. Anyway, I don't want to mess with this. So I put these on. You see? Now we got new stuff, it's locked tight in. So the next thing I want to do before I fire this thing up is make sure that there's nothing on the table so all my tools are put away. And I want to take a straight edge to make sure that these aren't sticking up. Nothing's sticking up. So I go anywhere where isn't that a great noise? It either sounds like do-rag or somebody scraping their teeth on a blackboard. Thinking of it, I will give you a link to do-rag right up there, right about now. Okay, everything is clear. I've got the switch toggled inside. The router table has an on and off switch that overrides whatever the router is doing. And then the sewing machine pedal overrides that. So I'm going to, that switch is on on the router. I'm going to flip that on. Notice nothing happens. Now I take my sewing machine pedal, which I could be, these are not feet, just in case you haven't figured out the concept of the opposable thumb yet. Well, I'll get there someday, not to worry. But anyway, when I push this on, you see, I can set this to be all on or just feather it, see? It won't kick on. It takes a while to come up to speed. That's what you want. But that's the beauty of this thing. So we're going to unhook all this stuff. And then I'm going to kind of show you a little trick. Because sometimes when we work our necks, we find out that the pickup is too high or not high enough or, or something like that. So we're going to figure out before we do any routing on a neck like this. What do we need to measure and route? Let me show you quick. Okay, guys. First thing. I do not want to put my fingerboard on the neck just yet. Why is that? Well, because you can see here that it brings the fingerboard or, or the fret, the neck up. What am I talking about? The neck up that much. I'm going to be trying to manage that while I'm cutting this out. And if I do it this way, I've got to put the equivalent of the fingerboard on a piece of wood down here. Or it's going to be wobbling all over the place like that. So first thing, do not put your fretboard on your neck. Now, I already have this neck bolted to the box. That's how I do it. You see there, there's cutouts. Everything is just right, and um, this license plate is going to go on here. Of course, I've got the holes marked. We're going to put T-nuts and keepers on there, but and I've got that notched out. See, so it fits underneath here. I really don't like the aesthetic of it ending right there and everything coming like that. So all my holes are lined up. You can see that. Now, this 
pickup is very different in size than this one. Can you see that? There's a difference. So, if I were to put this one on here now and take, I don't have any frets on here yet, and look. See that gap right there? That's a problem. Another problem is if I put this right on top of where it's going and I don't put a space or a wood underneath there, it's going to turn the whole license plate into a pickup. Some people like that. I think it sounds pretty tangy, which I don't want. I don't do tang. I'm not an astronaut anymore. Anyway, this one is sitting right here. And if I put the fingerboard, it clears it. Look at that. And it's got a couple of millimeters. That's what I want without the frets because I have to put a piece of space or wood here. And this is going to ride right under the string. So how did I do that? Well, let me show you. Let's use this pickup, which is considerably thicker. And let's use this neck here. And we'll use this license plate as a table. Okay, pay close attention now. You can see right here from those three pins that I pinned my necks this way on my scarf joint so I got something perpendicular not running parallel so the scarf joint doesn't cut loose um, I gave you an episode about specifically why I do that it's right up there right about now anyway I marked where the nut the back of the nut is going to be this is nice and flat I'll put the nut there I have this fancy Beverly Hills ruler you've seen it before it is cut to 25 and a half scale which means that I have a mark where the 12th fret is going to be and I know where my bridge is going to have to be which is right there now on this box I have it marked where that would be that tells me that by looking at the two of these let me try and grab a straight edge so I'm going to want following where this one is where it sticks out just a tad there where I want the fingerboard over my neck is going to end about right there and I already have the mark where that goes you can see over here that I have a mark where the end of the box is going to be and look I conveniently have this marked off where it's going to notch down into the box. You with me so far? We've got our scale and intonation set up. That's the most important thing first. Okay, I've moved everything over a little bit. Now, if I were to accidentally step on the gas pedal and this was on, that router bit is going to catch this, flip this, and hit me in the head before it hits the camera. You won't feel it. That's the beauty of virtual zoom or whatever it is. Anyway, so next thing is figure out how far do we have to notch this down and where is it where do we start well here's the trick we're going to take this we're going to flip it upside down we are going to take this fancy thing these cost like three dollars you want one you push this downwards flat this is sitting flat you can see everything sitting flat and then I just push down this slide until it hits the top I'm not going to push so hard that it teeter totters like this and gives me a false measurement but it's that much put this away I go over to this knowing my cut is going to be there and I measure down and what do you know I have a line there now you'll notice that that is right on the edge of this board it's almost a board thick which maybe is the reason I put this board in here and then the heel board so I got a space here of course we got to sand all this but I am going to go along with my pencil and this and run all the way down to where I know the end of the box is. I'm going to go, my tailpiece is about that far beyond there. I'm going to line up everything and 
I'm going to cut this down. You'll notice there's a little bit more. So this is going to balance with the part that's not cut out. If I cut it all the way to the end, it's going to be doing this on the board. I don't want that. So we got our marks. Let's set the router table. Okay, I had all the power off. I had it off on the table, and I had it off on the sewing machine paddle, which I did by unplugging it. And then, using the adjustment, going up or down, I put the very tip of the top of that router bit right on that line. And wherever I go, it will cut there. And I'll take it all the way down to within a couple. And I'm going to make uh, two cuts with a flush cut saw where I need to start and I'm going to give myself a little bit of space between the two cuts that way if one of them chips out it's not going to go beyond and you'll see that here in a minute all right there we go and I think oh this is overkill I have cut two lines one that matches that here line here line here down to that line so the depth of this is going to be cut out and then I've done the same at the back down to the line now you're saying well that's not even that's all right I'm going to sand all that down once everything comes together but here's the trick if I start routing this and something chips out I've got something that will break away here I don't want this chipping out once I start routing so I'll route this out and then when it gets down to the point I can either take a flush, flush cut saw if I want to and cut that last little bit out now that everything has gone out of here or I can just use the router. So let's route this out. I'm going to turn everything down so you don't have to listen to the noise and here we go. All right, that turned out pretty smooth. We're a little bit rough at the ends there because I could have left a little bit more on there and it would have made it a little bit easier to work because I was running out of table over here. Um, over here is fine, but I'll run this over the belt sander. But okay, so moment of truth. Remember, we're, we're going to put our fingerboard on still. And we're going to put a little bit of wood underneath here. But that license plate is going to sit there. This is the height of our fingerboard right here. We put that there. Remember, there's no frets there yet. And so when we spin that around, by the time we get our license plate underneath there and our frets, it's going to be right there, right where we want it to be. Now, in the event that we need to take this down a little bit, we can. But you see the importance now of putting that extra board in between this board and the heel. If you were to run a single board here, this would crater, and that's where I had some neck problems really early when I started using these better, thicker foil pickups. Alright guys, there you go. Sometimes you got to stop building and do a little maintenance or work on your equipment, keep it right. The last thing you want is a router cutting loose or a table saw or something like that. But I think the takeaway was uh, practice some safety. Um, sometimes if you got to route a lot, take it off in sections. Just make sure that the cuts you made uh, to the right depth to match your pickup is right. Uh, figure out the height of your pickup. That's ultimately what's going to get you in the end. Uh, once I remember when I first started off, string height was my worst thing. It was just always like this or it was way up or something like that. I couldn't get it right. So um, now and only now is it time to glue on the fret board and fret the thing. You really, like I said, you really don't want to be putting on the fretboard and then doing the router work because it causes you to take off an additional uh, basically you're running the router bit that much higher the thickness of the fretboard and you really don't need to and then you're having to put this small piece there's a reason I have this by the way um, it, and it came from 
uh, doing one with the fingerboard already on and I didn't have good luck so anyway I'm gonna fret this up now I have uh, three to do at the same time and thanks for watching give me a like I think sometimes these tips of where I've made mistakes and when mr. safety comes and visits you I don't have the pointer it I think had it had a router accident anyway don't worry it'll be back every teacher in America has one they want to give me hey thanks guys and I'll see you soon